All right, today we're going to start looking at 2011 FRQs from the AP Calculus AB exam. And we're going to start here with question number one. Now, this is the first year they went to two calculator questions and four non-calculator questions. So we're only going to be using a calculator for questions one and two. So let's start off here with question one. For zero is less than or equal to t, which is less than or equal to six, a particle is moving along the x-axis. The particle's position, x of t, is not explicitly given. The velocity of the particle is given by v of t equals 2 sine of e to the t over 4 power plus 1. The acceleration of the particle is given by a of t equals 1 half e to the t over 4 power cosine e to the t over 4 power. And x of 0 equals 2. They're giving us a lot of stuff here. They're giving us velocity function, they're giving us a, an acceleration function, and this piece here is going to be our initial condition that we have that x of 0 equals 2. It says, is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing at time t equals 5.5? Give a reason for your answer. All right, this is an easy one. Okay, the big thing with speed, whenever we look at speed and trying to determine if it increases or decreases, we have to look at the signs of velocity and acceleration. When they're the same sign, speed increases. When they are different signs, speed would decrease. So really all we have to figure out is what is velocity at 5.5 and what is acceleration at 5.5. So we're going to go ahead and plug in 5.5 into our velocity equation and 5.5 into our acceleration question or equation. Now remember, with FRQs, you want to make sure that you show some kind of work. So don't just say what the answer is. You've got to actually write down, identify these values. So in my calculator, And since it's a calculator active question, we can go ahead and just put that right in there. All right, for v of t, 2 sine of e to the 5.5 divided by 4 power plus 1. All right, that's going to give us negative 0.453. Remember, always three decimal places. And for acceleration, we're going to do 0.5, which is 1 half, e to the 5.5 divided by 4 power, cosine of 5, or e to the 5.5 divided by 4 power. And here, we get negative 1.359. And since these are the same sign, all right, and we're going to write a sentence. Since v of 5.5 and a of 5.5 have the same sign, speed increases. And that's going to cover part A. All right, part B, find the average velocity of the particle in the period of 0 to 6. Now, average of anything, we always say integral over interval. So let's make some room here. All right, we see that word average. When we see that word average, integral over interval. All right, so we're going from 0 to 6. What are we taking the average of? We're taking the average of velocity, so we're going to do v of t dt. And remember, we don't have to write down the actual function. We can just write v of t, and that's totally fine. And then our interval would be 6 minus 0. And again, this can be done right in the calculator. So we're going to go back to our calculator here. Integral math 9, 0 to 6. 
And we're going to type in v of t there. So 2 sine e to the x divided by 4 power. Close the parentheses, plus 1 dx. All right, that's what the integral is, but then we've got to make sure we divide by 6. So 1.949 is going to be our average velocity for this time period. Okay, and that's going to cover part B. All right, part C, now we're looking for total distance traveled. Now, total distance travel is a very common question that shows up when we're dealing with particles. Whenever you're looking for total distance, all right, total distance is always going to be the integral of the absolute value of velocity. All right, so we've got to make sure we take the absolute value of velocity for total distance. And again, we're going to go right for the calculator. We're going from 0 to 6, so we're going to do 0 to 6, absolute value of v of t. And we can write v of t, just don't forget, again, there's limits and that dt. <clears throat> so up here, we're going to go ahead and do math 9 again. Let me clear this. Math 9. 0 to 6. All right. Once you get inside the integrand, we can go ahead to math, go over to num. First thing is abs. That's our absolute values. And we're going to type in 2 sine of e to the x divided by 4 power plus 1. Go dx, bingo, our total distance traveled. All right, 12.573. And right, we can go ahead and set that equal to 12.573. All right, again, total distance is a big one. Another one that you see occasionally is total displacement. Total displacement would just be the integral of velocity. All right, that's another one that you may encounter. All right, last part, D. For 0 is less than or equal to t, which is less than or equal to 6, the particle changes direction exactly once. Find the position of the particle at this time. All right, let's make some room. This one's going to take a little bit more room. So particle changes directions. Well, first off, in order for it to change directions, we have to know that v of t is going to have to stop. The velocity is going to have to hit zero in order for it to change directions. So we've got to figure out where does v of t actually equal zero. And we want to make sure we put this on the paper because this is actually one of the point values for this question, identifying that v of t equals zero. All right, not only do we have to look for v of t equals zero, but it also has to change signs. Because that's going to tell us it's going to go to the right or the left. So let's go to our graph. All right, in my y equals, I'm going to go ahead and put my velocity function in there. And I already have it in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And since we are looking for the interval of 0 to 6, I'm going to change my window to 0 to 6. That's all I want to look at. And I'm going to go ahead and graph this. As this goes ahead and graphs, you see that it only crosses the x-axis at one point, right there. All right, so we've got to figure out what this value is, and we're going to do that by finding the 0. So second trace, 0. We'll do the left bound and right bound. So left, go over to the right, right bound, hit Enter. And we find that the 0 that this happens at is 5.19. Six. All right, this is the one time where it changes direction because one velocity is equal to zero and it also changes signs. It's changing from positive to negative, which actually tells us it's going to the right and then changes and goes to the left. Well, that's the first part of this question. Now they want to find the position of the particle at this time. Well, we don't have a position function, but we do know an initial condition and we know the velocity. Well, remember, when you integrate velocity, you get position, x of t. So we're going to use fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 for this. We're going to set up a definite integral. We know 0. We want to find 5.196.
and I'm going to integrate velocity for that. That will give me x of 5.196 minus x of 0. All right. Now with that, we can solve this just like a regular equation. This we're going to use our calculator. So in my calculator, I'm going to get out of here, clear that. We're going to do math 9 again. 0 to 5.196. You could also have stored that in there. And I already have that in Y1, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure I do have it in Y1. So I'm going to put in my integrand alpha trace Y1 and then DX. Enter. That's going to give me 12.135 equals x of 5.196 minus an x of 0. x of 0, they told us in the very beginning in the problem, x of 0 was 2. So now all I have to do to find this is add 2 over. And we find out that our answer is 14.135. And that equals our x of 5.196, which would answer the rest of that question. And that's the end of question one.